Welcome back to the part 5 of PHP MySQL login tutorial. First, we need to create a database of 5 fields that is user id that is data type is int, username that is varchar and email that is varchar, phone number the data type is int and the password is data type also varchar. Uh, we need to change the data type of email and uh, phone number to string and int respectively here so now uh, to fetch the information of a user from server we need to use fetch user data dot php and you see we will use the prepare statement to select the information of a user if username and password match question mark is used to prevent the sql injections as earlier and mysql statement bind param is used to bind the statement of a user and and his password and this statement will be finally execute and after returning the result the result will be stored or hold in an array uh, so after that you need to close the mysql database now we have to create a new class server request.java and it's consists of a progress dialog and uh, and uh, a connection timeout and a server address you can use your own server address here instead of this server address so um, this server request class consists of two methods stored user data in background and another is fetch user data in background and now we have we need to create a new interface that get user callback and it consists of a method public abstract void done user returned user then uh, when the server when the server request completes then public abstract void done method will be called and a user callback method will be called both to store and fetch the user data now after uh, call calling the stored user data in background this we need to create a new task that is stored data user async task and this will extends the async tasks and uh, a new this task will start when stored user data background method is called now async task phoenix on open execute method is called and it stops the progress dialog and your user callback is end to store the user details you can use uh, name value pair uh, uh, from uh, name value pair up to api level 22 after that you cannot use this name value pair because it will be depreciate too so instead you can use co content values to put your name value pair we and also um, uh, you, you should use http open url connection because this class is depreciated in api level 22 and above now uh, now we need to create now we need to uh, start in another new task that is fetch user async task from uh, within fetch user data in background class and, and this will extend the another async task class when async async task phoenix then on pay, uh, on post execute method is automatically called and this will return the user so the activity params and server request will be able to know when is to it to done and also be able to receive the details of the user and do in background will receive the server information to fetching user data using this username and password of user when we execute the post we will get the response so finally server request has been set up now to coming back to login.java now when user try to log in so you need to put the username and password and after username uh, put the username password 
the authentication is required so authenticate method will be called and after the authenticate meta uh, authentication user can log in to the database uh, so if the login data uh, login data is wrong then a error message will be shown so error ma message will be in correct details so this uh, method private void so error message will return the in error incorrect details and if the user details is true then the result will return the user and this method will call and we need to store the information in the local store and main activity class will be start automatically after that now coming back to register.java so after uh, where after uh, giving the user details user will try to register and the user details will be put into the uh, register user method and this method will be called and after the registration is successful then user will call back to the login class and ask to login again and finally we need to add the internet permission into the manifest so so this completes the registration login application so thanks for watching you can improve this application by hash the password because we cannot store it in as a text in the database so back to you with a new tutorial tomorrow bye for now see you soon